right, we are finishing up Jonah this morning. So if you will have your scripture ready for Jonah chapter 4. In the last couple of weeks, we've seen that this book is not just about Jonah and a great fish, uh, but it is truly about God's grace and the pursuit of God after Jonah throughout this whole book. Um, And we're going to see a lot more of that today. But we saw how God reels us in from the depths uh, in chapters 1 and 2 with Jonah uh, trying to run and, and escape what he has been called to do to go to Nineveh takes off, ends up on a ship, in a storm, in a fish, back on dry land, Um, this whole time being stubborn and being, uh, having hate in his heart for the Ninevites, but then we see God's grace. And then we saw that how God reels us in from our ignorance, that the Ninevites had no clue who Almighty God is, the great I am. Uh, And Jonah was supposed to be the guy to show up and proclaim that message, and they got it. Um, And that's an amazing, amazing picture of the grace that God has uh, for not only those that that are pursuing a rightness in his eyes, but those who have no clue of who he is. And we see God's grace again. And then today we are looking at how God reels us in from our grumbling. Has anyone grumbled (laughs) recently, last 60 minutes? Um, so sorry for the sto- the toes stepping, um, and I don't even care if you have steel toed boots, it's still going to get you. Um, but we're looking at today of Jonah's reaction to all that has happened already. Um, he, he experienced firsthand the grace of God, God rescuing him from uh, the ship and from the fish. And then he, he's able to witness this great revival, but good old Jonah Let's go to four chapter, or chapter 4, verse 1. And it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. Really, Jonah? Come on. Um, so this first point is that, God, that our grumbling happens when our plans are different than God's plans. Here's this pursuit of God on Jonah's life, and he's still not getting it. Uh, this entire city of 120,000 plus, which, by the way, Pastor Keith asked me to check it out. Waldorf, as of 2015-16, has 68,000 in population. So a little bit less than twice the size of Waldorf um, is what this revival happened. But here is Jonah. I mean, start immediately after. It displeased him exceedingly. He, we use exceedingly a lot through Jonah. Um, and he was angry. So here's this it. It displeased Jonah. It is a situation that Jonah had in his mind exactly what was going to happen to Nineveh. Uh, Irregardless of the message they brought and, oh, we believe in God, Jonah's like, yeah, right. Um, He's ready to watch this destruction happen. He doesn't like Nineveh, doesn't like uh, the people there. They deserve to die. They don't deserve the grace of God. So Jonah's like, come on, God. Like, you know, don't, don't save them. You know, it's physically or spiritually. Uh, So Jonah's just, he's a mess. And we're going to keep seeing what kind of a mess he is. But what about some it's in our life? Um, Some times in our life that we have a situation that we thought we had all planned out, and God throws this curveball or this this hard right turn. You know, here's Jonah that thinks God's going to destroy Nineveh. But no, he saves it. And our plans don't always go the way that we plan. I didn't plan after 25 years of marriage to have the last five years have Carrie deal with all that she's dealing with, the disease, uh, the constant pain. No one has made, makes plans for that. I didn't plan to be on a first name basis with a pharmacist at Rite Aid, who by the way, and you know how loud I am in certain stores, don't give me testimony, Um, but they'll call me out before I even get to the counter. Um, hey, Randy, what's happening? Um, and by the way, a bonus with Rite Aid, a little side note, if you spend $1,000 uh, on whatever, and this includes pharmacy, and this, doesn't, this includes the total payment of the prescriptions, not just your copay, you get 20% off everything in the store all year. So if you want to go shopping with me to Rite Aid, let me know. <laughs> 
But by the way, the grocery items at 20% off still don't quite equal the savings at Safeway. Um, and that, hopefully I'll get the check in the mail for that. But, you know, we, we have this plan, and there's illness that comes, there's lost jobs, there's broken relationships. And I'm thinking, God, this is not what I had in my mind for what my marriage was going to look like for 25 years. But here's how messed up Jonah is, okay? Here's my situation with a, a right turn that God threw in to, to carry my life um, for the bad. But here's Jonah that experienced this amazing event with Nineveh, and he's angry about it. You know, I should have a right to be a little angry with my situation, but here's Jonah that got to partake and be used by God to bring a revival to Nineveh, but he's mad about it. Um, and so he is just having some issue, uh, very much a stinky attitude. And how often is God able to use, and we've seen God use Jonah, uh, with the saving of the sailors, uh, with the saving in Nineveh. And how many times do we show up on a Sunday morning, we already confess a little bit about grumbling, but even have a stinky attitude. I don't want to be here. I'm not quite ready for class. I hope there's only like a couple of kids, not the whole class show up for Sunday school. Come on, I know you've been there. But God is so much bigger and so much greater than our little attitude that he uses us, and that's amazing. Um, and he was able to use Jonah no matter Jonah's anger and his displeasement. Um, and that's this picture of, of God continuing to pursue Jonah no matter how much grumbling Jonah's doing. And it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. Doesn't this remind you of the prodigal son's brother? When the prodigal son comes home and the brother's like, seriously, dad? The fatted calf? You know, you're not even giving me some little puny lamb to hang out with my friends with? Um, and, I, and why are we doing this? Um, and here's this picture of Jonah not grasping the grace of God in the lives and in the city of Nineveh. And he should be on a spiritual high uh, to see that kind of revival. I remember uh, my, my first summer after my first year of college, so this is the summer of 86. Yes, I'm, and I'm not 50, though. Where's Ken? Um, <laughs> but I was on a summer evangelism team. We were from the states that got to go to different churches and lead uh, revival services and do fellowships and different activities for the churches. And I remember uh, my first, is probably the second weekend, Livermore, California. We had an event during the day and a time of invitation, and this guy wanted to accept Christ. Uh, I grew up in a church. I did all the training and survival kid, and I knew how to kind of share my, my testimony and, and share the gospel, but I hadn't done it yet. And I'm like, yes, this guy's going to accept Christ. And sure enough, this guy accepted Christ after going through uh, this conversation. I was pumped for days. Um, it is just an, an amazing experience to be used by God to share his love and his grace with someone else who, who didn't have a clue before, who accepts Christ. And here's Jonah with a whole city. And he's like, I'm mad at you, God. I can't believe you did that. Such a, such a vast contrast, um, and what grumbling can lead to, um, this very hard heart. And I can imagine Jonah saying, Nineveh, I don't even like these people. They're mean, they're evil, they're wicked. I want nothing to do with them. Uh, they've done nothing for me. I want to do nothing for them. Kind of like the golden rule, do unto others as they would do to you. But God's saying, no. Jonah, this is what I need you to understand, is that I need you to do to others what I have done for you. I need to love your neighbor as I have loved you, not as you love yourself. This is greater than just, you know, I want to go hang out with the nice people. I'll, I'll spread the word all day to the nice people, but don't send me to the people I hate, the people that, that bring anger into my life, that I'm grumbling about. Um, and how many times do we have coworkers and neighbors and people in the, in the, the area that I would never go to that part of town? Uh, there's no way. 
let me, pers- let me be, hang out with the nice people who I know are going to accept me. But no, God is trying to t- let Jonah know, you, it is bigger than this. This is my love. This is not your love. And Jonah just still doesn't get it. Um, and grumbling makes us angry. Going on in verse, chapter, in verse 2, um, that he prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee Tarshish. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relenting from disaster. God, you, why do you have to be you? Okay? Where in the world would you ever see these words of, of praise and adoration to Almighty God? Uh, merciful, gracious, steadfast love, set in anger. Like Jonah's mad at God, and God's being God. And Jonah, I mean, that's how messed up poor Jonah is. Um, and I don't understand how he just wasn't getting this. Uh, that this anger was so strong in Jonah's life, not understanding the amazing miracle that happened in Nineveh. And he goes on, Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life for me, for it is better for me to die than to live. He, he's so angry and so frustrated with this whole situation. He's like, God, just take me out. Uh, I don't want to be here anymore. Of course, you know what I said a couple of weeks ago. If I was God, it would have been like, see ya. You know, I'm done with you. You have a bad attitude. You don't even get what I'm trying to say. And aren't you glad I'm not God? Um, but Jonah's just not getting it. And he goes on to say, now this I love. I love verse 4. I'm reading it. Um, it's a little bit different in the other translations. But I imagine God's office, uh, this very nice, some dark mahogany in the, in the office, a very calming type scenario and, and, and decor, and this nice uh, lounge kind of couch, and he invites Jonah to come in, and Jonah, you know, lay down. Uh, Let's talk about this. And I imagine the Lord saying, do you do well to be angry? Doesn't it sound like a a counselor or or someone uh, giving some some guidance uh, to your emotional struggles? You know, does it really do you good to be angry? Uh, and at this point, Jonah doesn't answer because he just knows. He's fed up with God. Um, but this anger, when we are grumbling to the point of anger, it just completely blinds us from so much. Um, and this, this good old friend, anger. Uh, I definitely deal with anger issues. Uh, there are times, and this was even times before the situation with Carrie. Uh, to the point that I had to go and talk to someone, um, get some counseling, uh, get some, some, some treatment, if you will, because I was just, my fuse had gone down to probably nothing. It took anything that was out of, uh, out of sync in my life that I thought that sent me into this anger mode. Um, and it, it messed things up. It was not happy at the house. Um, it was not a good a good time relationship-wise with Carrie, it just, it was getting bad. So I finally had to go get help. So this anger thing is a real situation. Um, I know that everyone's dealt with, dealt with anger on some level. Um, But you allow this grumbling, you allow this, you know, God, this is not the way things should have gone. This is not the way my work should be. This is not the way my marriage should be. My kids should act. Whatever it is can lead to a very dangerous road of anger. And Jonah's there. Jonah's not wanting to do, have to do with anything with what God, this amazing revival, that there should be, you know, singing and praising and, and worshiping for days and weeks. Um, but Jonah's mad about it. Um, and so this anger can be so real. And then we look at that grumbling happens Grumbling happens when our priorities are messed up. That's part of Jonah's problem, is he's not getting all this in the right order and not understanding this grace thing over his own, his own feelings and, and thoughts. Going on to verse 5, Jonah went out of the city, sat to the east of the city, and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade till he should see what would become of the city. 
that little stinker <laughs> took off out of Nineveh to get as far away as possible, which, by the way, I guess he wasn't into a solid discipleship program. Because here's all these new believers, and you would hope he would have some system in place, and let's memorize some scripture. No, he's gone. He's like, you know why? Because these guys, it's not going to stick. It's going to be like the seed on the rocky ground uh, that's just, you know, they heard it. Oh, no, God's going to destroy our city. We better believe him so that we will be saved. Um, Jonah just had all this doubt in what Nineveh was going to be about. So he wanted a good vantage point. He was going to wait out the 40 days and wait for this destruction of Nineveh to happen. I can just imagine it. But here's this God that is still pursuing Jonah. Again, I would have been done with Jonah. Um, let him go, take a break, but Jonah, or God is still pursuing Jonah in this as we go on. And so God sets up this experience, this illustration for Jonah, hope, hoping that maybe he will get a little bit better idea of what this amazing grace is that God gave to the Ninevites. So verse 6, Now the Lord God appointed a plant and made it come up over Jonah, that it might be a shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the plant so that it with no way to second. Go back to verse 6. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. Okay, so finally in this whole book of Jonah... Here's what you see on Jonah's face. You ready? I got a plant. Shade in my head. Who knows if he was balding or not. But I've got all the shade. I'm in a good place. This is relaxing. Thank you, plant. Um, that's the whole book of Jonah. That's the only time this guy's happy. Um, it was this thing. Um, and that, now that's a scary side note, too, is how much joy and happiness are we putting in the things in our life um, and not Almighty God. But sure enough, God's like, no, hold on, Jonah. So in, in comes a worm, in comes a scorching sun and wind um, the very next day, and Jonah is fit to be tied again. I just take me out, God. I don't want to live anymore. And God says again, do you do well to be angry? And this time Jonah's like, yes, you, the plant died. You know, I deserve that. Uh, this, is, this is ridiculous. Um, so now look at Jonah. Jonah doesn't reply to God's first ask about anger, about the Ninevites. But when it's about a plant, Jonah's like, yeah, I'm angry. Uh, that plant shouldn't have died. It's all that I had. And sure enough, Jonah, his priorities are so cattywampus. That's what I use for a service. Did you like that? Yes, thank you. It's a Greek word somewhere. We'll go look later. But here is a picture of God showing a little bit of grace to Jonah with the plant. You know, Jonah, you're miserable. Let me provide something. He appointed a plant. And Jonah gets this big, happy, cheesy smile on his face for a day. But that in contrast to when Jonah got to witness the saving power of Almighty God on the city of Nineveh, and he's angry about it. Talk about your priorities all mi mixed up. Terrible. Um, this is where the state of Jonah's grumbling has led. And Jonah is ready to die because he's angry over the destruction of this little plant and feels nothing for this whole city of Nineveh. And Here's the thing. God loves Jonah. Throughout all of this, again, you know, I would have taken Jonah out chapters ago. But here's God still pursuing Jonah. Still, after all this drama, this whining, this grumbling to the point of anger, God is still pursuing Jonah. And look at the details which God has given to Jonah. Okay, first he provides a ship. Let's Jonah kind of take off. First he provides a ship. And then the storm to kind of say, Jonah, you know, I'm here. Where are you going? Um, and then provides the fish and then provides a plant and then a worm and then the wind. Like God is in every bit of the details. How often in our life are we missing these details of God in our life? 
because we're so caught up in our grumbling, we're so caught up in our busyness. The same God that's giving all these little details to Jonah is the same God in my life that's giving me little details. Um, I had a pastor ridiculously say that sunsets were just part of creation, just part of the scientific process, that God, you know, that God didn't make that pretty sunset for you to watch. Hogwash. If I see a sunset, I don't care if there's a thousand of you around, that's, that's my sun. Like, God did that for me so I can enjoy him. Don't tell me that, oh, it's just part of the, the creation factor, and that's what happens when the sun goes down and mixes with the gases of the earth and, or whatever. I'll have to look that up now. But <laughs> until you Google it, I'm right. Um, <laughs> but... He is in the details of our life. He is pursuing us. As much as he was pursuing Jonah, as messed up as Jonah was, that's amazing. Um, That's Almighty God pursuing me. That blows my mind um, and is so amazing. So as we continue and see that Jonah's priorities are messed up, that his grumbling has made him angry, um, that he's not quite getting all this, The last point of grumbling happens when our love is different than God's love. Um, There is a man named Thomas Carlyle that wrote a poem called You, Jonah, back in 1968. And let me read to you a couple of stanzas. And Jonah stalked to his shaded seat and waited for God to come around to his way of thinking. And God is still waiting for a host of Jonahs in their comfortable houses to come around to his way of loving. So God gives Jonah this beautiful example of a plant in comparison to the city of Nineveh. And and is saying, Jonah, I love the people of Nineveh. Um, How can you not see that versus your love for this little puny plant? And our culture today is just so crazy. Um, How do we see God in this time that we live in? Um, in the politics, in the culture, in, in every aspect of what, we're, of what we're going through? How do we truly see um, God at work in our life and in the work of this country? But we've got to know that God loves us. He's pursuing us. God loves us, the people in Waldorf, and his grace is, is available for them. God loves the people of Maryland. God loves the people of the United States. God loves the people of the world. Um, and this grace is so amazing um, that h- who are we to sit back and grumble about life um, when there are so many that don't have a clue about who he is? Romans 5, 8, but God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That verse blows me away every time because it's not, you know what, come to church 4.5 weeks of the, of the month, um, get get your dress right, get your attitude right, like make these changes. No, it is while we were in our sin and our wickedness and our evilness that Christ died for us. Um, That's amazing. That is the grace that God is trying to pound into Jonah's head. Look, get it. You know, this is what's going on. And how many times do we need uh, God to pound that into our head? of look at what I'm doing in your life. Look at what I'm doing in the life of our church. I am at work. Uh, Don't sit there and kick back and and be grumbly and uh, complaining and and all of of the things that are going on. Understand that my grace is sufficient for you and everyone else. So we wrap up with the last two verses. And the Lord said, You pity the plant for which you did not labor, Nor did you make it grow, which came into being in the night and perished in the night. And should not I pity Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and all so much cattle? So here we are at the end of, of Jonah, and it ends with God's grace. How do I not pity the city of Nineveh and the people in it, of which... I am glad I'm a grateful, re- and a, a grateful recipient of God's grace in my life. Knowing that this is the key to the whole book of Jonah, is God's grace and pursuit of Jonah and all those who did not know him. 
In 1 Timothy 1.15, it says, The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. He came in to, to rescue the lost and, and pursue them, but pursue us as we continue to grow in our faith, continue to, uh, continue to grow in our relationship with him. God is still at work in our life. It's not just a one-time shot. Um, here you go. I'll see you in heaven. It's a continual work. Uh, and that's, that's an awesome God that loves us so much. And the book of Jonah ends with a question with no answer. There's no answer. Did Jonah finally get it? I don't know. Are we going to finally get it? I don't know. But let me tell you this. If we do know the right answer, that God's grace is amazing, that this, this pity that he felt on Nineveh, he has felt for us, if we have experienced God's mercy and grace by the shed blood of Christ Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, our lives should be radically different. There should be nothing the same about our life when we have experienced the grace of God in our life. Um, as we pursue the things of this world, as we get to hang out and enjoy things of this world, the real, true pursuit of our life should be striving to be more Christ-like and pursuing the things of Christ. Our perspective should be different. There should be more of Christ and less of us and a lot less grumbling. Um, if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you do not understand what this grace means, you've heard about it, you might have experienced some aspect of it, if you do not truly know 100% in your life that this grace is for you, that this God that has provided his son to die on a cross wants you, please come and talk to one of us during this time of invitation or whenever. Um, if you have people in your life that you know that don't know Christ at all, have an opportunity, create an opportunity uh, to invite them to church, to have a conversation with them, uh, to pursue them and to have that, that same look that, that God has for us, to love them as Christ loved you um, and loved us. So there's so much more to go ahead uh, in our life. And I'm going to close with this. Um, are we willing to have God's heart for the Ninevehs of this world? Or will we hate them as Jonah hated the city of Nineveh? Are we willing to allow God to reel us in from our grumbling um, and, and to understand we're missing out on a bunch when we're grumbling. In fact, let me close with this. This is bonus. It's free. Um, I've got the notes if you want to take a picture of it later. But this is Pastor Randy's uh, guide to degrumbalizing your life. Okay? <laughs> Two points. First point is stop grumbling. That's it. Just stop grumbling. Right? Problem solved. Okay, fine. Stop grumbling and be thankful. That's your first thing. You can't have both, by the way. You can't be thankful to the things that God's doing and grumble at the same time. Um, so maybe we need to swing our, my balance way over um, and, and, and start seeing God in every circumstance of my life, seeing God in every aspect of my life, every situation, knowing that he's there. I mean, it's, it's all part of his plan. Um, and we need to be more thankful in our heart. Um, in everything, give thanks. So there's step one. Step two, be willing to love others as Christ loves us. And that's hard. That, that's hard. Uh, my brother Keith came forward a couple of weeks ago. I can, I, can, I can love him. He's a nice guy. Good family man. Okay. What did we do with the, the man that shot the young Westlake High School student? Um, and kill them. Are we ready to love him like Christ loved us? Um, and, and I'm sure you can come up with, with anyone. Um, but there's people in our life that aren't lovable. They're not likable. I'd, I'd prefer to hate them, probably. Um, but that's not the love that Christ has for them. That's the love that we need to start pursuing and, and moving towards in our life towards them to have Christ-filtered lenses. I love that picture of putting on these, these glasses, 
that see the things that Christ sees, um, sees the love, the opportunity, the, the ministry that can happen the way that he sees it, not the way that I see it, not the way that makes me comfortable. Um, so let's all commit to start de in our life um, as best as possible. I don't know how long I'll make it, but I commit to try. Um, but it truly is possible because of Christ Jesus, um, because of his saving grace in our life, because this, this amazing pursuit of God in our life. Um, we have no excuse. Um, and I have to say, Joan, there's, prob- there's a little bit of Jonah in all of us and probably a whole lot of Jonah in most of us. Um, and I hope you've seen this, this picture of what Jonah went through, um, but this greater picture of this pursuit of God's grace on his life. Um, he loves us. He loves each and every one of us desperately and passionately. Um, and our lives should be different because of it. Uh, let's have a time of invitation. If, if it, there's a commitment you need to make, uh, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you as we close this time uh, in invitation. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, for the message of your amazing, uh, outrageous grace in our life. Uh, Father, as we saw through Jonah, uh, that you are not going to let us go, that you've got, uh, you've got us lined in and ready to reel us in. Father, help us to be more willing. Help us to be more thankful. Help us to continue to pursue the things of you, uh, your glory in our life, uh, that, that we look more like Christ in our actions and our deeds and our words, Father, that, than we did yesterday in this pursuit of our relationship with you, that we continue uh, this journey of salvation in our life. Uh, And Father, I pray for opportunities this week uh, that we can proclaim your love to those around us and those who desperately need to know you and to understand you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.